Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are so very pleased that you have chosen to join us for this presentation of Stories of the Sacred. My colleague and I have been discussing the birth of Jesus, and we decided it really doesn't start in the New Testament. Quite right. You see, it actually started at the very beginning. So that is where our presentation is going to begin. At the beginning. Yes, at creation to be exact. You may be wondering, what does the birth of Jesus have to do with the creation? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into the beginning that has come into the beginning. In Him was life, and life was the light of Him. John 1, 1 through 4. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we behold His glory. Glory as one of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1, 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On day number one, God made light. He made the day and he made the night. On day number two, God made the sky. It's big and blue and way up high. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On day number three, God made the sea. He made the land, every plant and tree. On day number four, God made the stars and put the sun in the sky, super duper far away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden. 
on him with the cool of the day. But the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said. I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid, so I hid myself. And he said, Have you eaten from the tree which I command you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me from the tree and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. Genesis 3, 8, through 13. Sounds like the blame game to me. Yes, but by their disobedience, the human race now needed a savior. That's why we wanted to do this presentation today. Our presentation is called the Stories of the Savior because we are telling about different people in the Bible and their stories of the Savior. Exactly. I have this chart that can help us along the way. Fancy. I know. So who's next? Noah. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of the man was great on earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil accountable. And the Lord was sorry that he made the man on earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out a man whom I created from the face of the land, and then from the man to animals, to creeping things, and birds of the sky. For I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found the favor in the eyes of the Lord. Genesis 6, 5, 3.
the story of the Savior. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not understand the flood until the flood came and took them away. So shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Matthew 24, 37-39. For Christ also died for our sins once for all. For the unjust, in order that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but man made, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he made a probation to the spirits, now in prison, once, who once were disobedient and the patience of God kept waiting until the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water, and corresponding to the baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God of four good things through, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Peter 3, 8-21. So, so Adam and Eve have a story, and so does Noah. Who else? We are going to move on to Abraham. I love that song. Father Abraham? No, no, no. We're not going to sing that song. Oh, yes, we are.
The book of genealogy of Christ of Jesus Christ, the son of David and the son of Abraham, Matthew 1 1. Jesus came from the bloodline of Abraham. So Abraham was Jesus' great, 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 great. Really great grandpa? <laughs> I guess you can say that. <laughs> oh no. But they also said Jesus came from David. Should we go on to him next? No.
story was deeply personal. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee, called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of all the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, and coming in, and he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was grievously troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of solution this might be. Luke 1, 26 through 29. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for I have found favor with God. And behold, you will convince in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will region over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Luke 1, 30 through 33. Mary's story starts with her being told that she had been chosen to be the mother of the Savior. That's truly an amazing story. This is where John's story started as well. John's story started before he was even born. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias. For your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will marry the son, and you will give him the name John. And you will have joy, the gladness, and many people will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine or milk. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and while yet in his mother's womb, and he will turn back many of the sons of Israel to the Lord God. Luke 1, 13-16. And it is he who will go as a formula before him, in the spirit of the power of Elijah, to turn to his hearts of the fathers back to the children, and, and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteousness, so as to make ready the people prepared, prepared for the Lord. Luke 1 17. Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judah, 
the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him, and was with the child. When they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to a firstborn, firstborn son, and wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for the, them in the inn. Luke 2, 1 through 7. That didn't mention an innkeeper. It does say that Mary gave birth to Jesus and laid him in a manger. Do you know what the manger is? Sure, it's like a trough that animals eat out of. Where do you usually find troughs that animals eat out of? In barns. What's another name for barns? A stable. Someone has to own the stables, don't they? Yeah. That is who I'm calling the innkeeper. He was the owner of the place where Mary and Joseph stayed and where Jesus was born. Right. He was the story of the Savior. He didn't know that by telling Mary and Joseph that they could stay in his stable, that he was giving household to the Son of God. Wow, what a thought. Yes, he was able to provide a place to stay for a Savior, and he didn't even know it. Praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and earth of peace among men to you. He is pleased. The 2, 13, the 14. And when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem, then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord made, has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph. And, they, and the baby, as he was lying in a manger, which they had seen this, they made known the statements which had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it wondered the things which were told by them, by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in their heart. The shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as been told them. Luke 2, 15-20.
All right, that concludes our Christmas. <laughs>